I imagine some sort of like mechanized slave camp. But, you know, that's just me. Um, so, just for everyone watching at home, this is a little different compared to other roleplay games. There isn't really any sort of XP given out. Um, and we only, the only way that we can like sort of advance, uh, so because XP, that you level up every three sessions you play. So this would be our first session. Um, and so the next, the next uh, over the next two sessions, we will uh, we'll be able to level up at the end of it. Um, and the way that you sort of get gear in this game is by getting resources and stuff like that. So having said that, I don't think we managed to get any resources at all during this session, which is pretty standard. And um, considering we're going to move into the survival variant next time. So... Um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, wreckage? Uh, what else do we have to do to wind this session up? Uh, we have to discuss what we liked and what we didn't like about the system, what we liked and what we didn't like about the GMing mm. uh, and the setting, mm. and uh, discuss, as a normal group typically does at the end of the game, what we can do to improve next time. Um, yeah. Please buff rifles. Yeah, buff rifles. Yeah. Well, I think... I think <laughs> I think in that case, I mean, like, it definitely sounds like your stats or alignments or, or whatnot were sort of skewed in the wrong direction. Like, you sort of went middle down the road. Um, I mean, I was about to avoid death. Yeah. Um, but it, it kind of seems like it really favors rate of fire, like, considerably. Yeah. Like, maybe, I mean, maybe an assault rifle might have been a better choice for you. Um, yeah, that's what I was originally planning on. Yeah. Um... But I tell you it's what, it's not that I. It's like in the real world, rate of fire is heavily favored too. Yeah. Um. But there is actually a purpose to these. They're still snipers because the range is so gigantic. Um. The thing is yeah. that doesn't. That's not reflected in the system. It only gets a tiny boost to range. The rifle. Um. So one of the things potentially could be making that that boost significant. Like also, yeah. you could do something like ten range or something. You could also do something like, you know, modify the rifle so that you can have, like, a higher rate of fire on it. I mean, there's but things I, I, you could do. I'm coming do. at it from the, the, which I think is what the creator has, which yeah. is sort of a realistic interpretation of modern warfare with guns. Mm. And you don't have high rate of fire snipers either, but you still have snipers. And that's because they do, you know, thousands and thousands of yards in the real world. Um, not because... Like and rate of fire is still really good in the medium range, um, yeah. Which is what most of this combat is designed around medium range combat. So in that sense, I think rate of fire is appropriately powered, but the rifle is inappropriately underpowered. It's good that fives are crits. That's good, um, yep. but it needs to. If to, in order to be balanced, I think what it needs is to have like really significantly no range penalty. Like, it only has, like, a couple more range in the current setting. It should be, like, 10 range, and then 20 range then is only minus 2, and then 30 range is only minus 4, and with focus, um, you know, you... you I don't know. Like, I think there's a be... big difference between range 3 and range 5, I, for sure. I feel like things like precision weapons, rifles, yeah. should have, like, an additional hit die or something like that. Like you have a forty six instead of a three d six or maybe. something. Like maybe maybe you can be something like you use a different type of ammunition, for example, something that hits a little harder, and maybe that gives you the extra die. I mean, it, it I'm does. to come at it from the realism perspective, and the uh, realism. Yeah, I'm thinking you train with this weapon to be specifically more accurate, so you should be more accurate. It really, but here's the thing: like, movement is around four or five in this system, right? Mm. That means in six seconds, with a with a standard move action, a person with five movement, who's so he's really quick, can move seven, and that somehow is further than the range of a rifle. That makes no sense. In my uh, mind, yeah. That's, yeah, that's true. The thing yeah. that makes that like somebody with only. I think SMGs are appropriately ranged because they are really hard to hit with. I think assault rifles, blah, 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 those are all probably appropriately ranged. But only five range on the rifle makes no sense. If it's supposed to be a rifle rifle, a hunting rifle, a sniper rifle, but an actual single shot, 
ranged rifle. It's got to have a range of like 10, just so that at 20, it's only minus two. So, and then at, and having said that, what does everyone think about the submachine guns? Because that seemed to be the favorite of everyone who was doing range combat for some reason. Well, because it was in the dice. Um, it was in the dice. Was, so, I mean, like it, it might the, come. Uh, it might come down to the fact that ammunition price. might become like a humongous problem. So maybe yeah. having like a lot more, like your your bullets are worth a lot more with a rifle, for example, might actually be a better thing. Though I don't understand why it doesn't have a plus one to hit on the rifle. If anything, it I should think, have more yeah. plus one to hit. Yeah, I think that the rifle's underpowered, but I actually think that the SMG is perfectly powered. Yeah. Especially yeah. with the ammunition expenditures, with its current range, like yeah, all of that. playing in survival. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I'm not saying the SMG is overpowered, I'm saying the rifle is underpowered. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I'm looking at the assault rifle stats compared to it, and... Um, I mean, it might have cost only one more, but assault rifle, um, it it loses the strong hit for the five crit, yeah. but it do, it only loses one range, but gets more endurance damage. Um, can burst has rate fire of two, so it can burst fire. Mm. I'll be interested to hear what Wade has to say about increasing the range of rifles, quote unquote. Yeah. Um, uh, because right now they just seem worthless. Mm -hmm. And and uh, even at their current stats. If you can use them to to kill something so far away that it has no chance of firing back or even moving to attack you in several turns, like that is the real purpose of a sniper. Yeah, yeah. it's like a safe distance weapon. Um, well, see, I always thought the rifle would be something like you know something that you could shoot over a hundred meters or something like that. Like even with iron sights, like maybe a rifle, for example. Let's take a look at the um, the stuff that you can put onto a rifle. Um, because I know there's stuff that you can, you can add here. Um, where are we? Weapon modification. So, you can add advanced ammo, which will give you plus one to hit and plus one to range. That actually might be pretty cool for you. Um, yeah. and let's see here. You can add a laser sight, which will also add another hit die. Another hit, a uh, one hit to it. Um... Shortened clip. Oh, that's interesting. You can add a shortened clip and add the rate of fire down oh, wait. one more. Wait, can you say that again? That the stipe cut out for a second for you? Uh, there's, there's, um, there is a shortened clip which adds two to hit, but at negative one rate of fire, I assume that wouldn't be impossible. That would be impossible to add to a rifle because you wouldn't yeah. hit. Um, temporary advanced ammo is. Oh wow, that's something that you can actually get. Just for, mm. okay, so that doesn't cost you anything. That costs you a um, uh, a uh, search time, spare time roll of fourteen or higher. Give you temporary plus one ammo. Um, yeah, that seems like it's pretty much all it does. Yeah, so the, you get you get like a laser sight, and there doesn't seem to be any sort of scope or anything like that in here, which is interesting. Yep. Yeah. Um, that might be something worth adding. Yeah. I scope that might. I don't know about. Th there's one in here. There's one in here that's like extended barrel, which is uh, negative two to hit plus one to range. I don't know if that's at all ever worth it. Because advanced ammo is right above it. Yeah. Um, also. Oh well, no, the difference is, is that Extended Barrel is only a time roll. The other one is, yeah, a, but, is a resource. Um, I mean, that is a minus two to hit. And, uh, yeah. So the main problem is experiencing is hit. The, the extended clip for the, for the SMG might actually be pretty cool. You get an extra one damage die on it. Um, and mm -hmm. that's only a time roll. I don't know how yeah. that works exactly. Does that give you an extra damage die, but do you use four ammo? But then you, your clip is... No, your clip would change size, wouldn't it? Because your clip is... Um, uh, your ammo size is three times rate of fire, and your rate of fire would be four then. So you would have a clip of... Uh, you'd be able to shoot four, three times still, but you'd be able to shoot with an extra die. That's actually not so bad. Actually, that's not so I mean, bad at all. That definitely makes up for the fact that it's a negative two, though. That's probably worth it a lot, actually. Yeah. 
Just depends on the weapon. Yeah. Um, doesn't look I like mean, there's a lot of scopes in here, but maybe we could, you know, it might be better to ask for something like that soon. Yeah, maybe ask for a scope that might cost it cost a bit, maybe not add much to hit, but definitely add something to range. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, oh, there's a uh, telescopic lens. What? It, it negative one to hit. I don't see how a lens adds. Anyway, um, there's some stuff in here yeah. that needs to be sort of worked around a little bit. Um, in terms of, like, uh, the setting, I thought the setting was pretty fucking awesome, to be honest with you. Yep. I liked how you split up the combat between us and then we yeah. met in the middle. Um, yeah, I, I like that that's too. pretty good. Um, I, I do think it's kind of like, so the only the only thing that I can talk about is like my character is like he literally has lots and lots of negatives to conversation and culture. Um, like, there's no way I could get around that, um, yep. unless I want to waste a point in making them a train skill. But he, you know, in terms of like character, he's an alpha, so he comes down, and he's he's probably the most monstrous looking uh, nephilim that you guys have ever seen. Yet that doesn't. But he's still, like, I I understand what your social stats reflect. Mm. That shouldn't stop you from saying things in character. No, I get that, yeah. but Sh what I'm saying is, it doesn't like. What a, a better way maybe of handling something like that was seeing if they can hold face against a creature that looks like that. Um, I don't know if that's an actual thing that you guys can do. Resolve? Maybe, but like I don't like negative. mechanizing players' responses to things. It's no, I get yeah. that, but when, I, when I'm actually trying to, my intention is to stop them from doing something. Having them just go, well, no, nah, I don't want to do that, and then walk away. It doesn't seem to reflect the type of character and the type of monster that my character is. It doesn't seem to... Re well, it does, because in the situation, it's three against one, so unless you're a multi-armed, like, multi-weaponed creature, it doesn't matter how monstrous you look, Graham's response was somewhat in character. Now, he... he maybe he should keep in mind just how monstrous you are and just how threatening it is to be threatened by you. Well, for him but, to turn around and say, no vagina face, and then push a man into a pod and, and give me the finger birds and, fl and fucking go into space, you know? Well, that I, seemed like a little out of character, I, and it, it didn't... It, I, to I, be I honest, I didn't... Really under the, I was operating under the... Part of my character's is that he doesn't like Nephilim, as he shouldn't, and that's what, kind of okay. what I was playing off of. Yeah. That he, that's why he, act, he acts so differently and so vitriolically to you. So what you should be looking at not is ignorance of your fear, but defiance of you. Basically, so it's you, a, you appropriate, and... uh, Dave, is mm. what I'm saying. All right. Like, well, I mean, like, if we ever see... Like, I, I have a prejudice against the Legion as well, so... Um, uh, sorry, they're Cal Kaltorans as well, so... You all have prejudices against each other, but they're not not—they're not supposed to be overwhelming. You're not supposed... Yeah. You're not caricatures of people. You're, you're, you're well... You're, you're, you're flushed out people. You have cultural reasons to dislike each other but that doesn't mean you're southern racists like that's the that's the difference yeah. Yeah. you see what i'm saying that's yeah, a caricature I feel, I, I feel like the fact that he's an alpha changes that uh, yes and no like because he because he's practically a monster yeah i'm basically the most monstrous thing that you guys have seen and there's history of me just decimating well my people at least the way that I look and... Yes, but you all also know that your species only survive in the galaxy by cooperating and have successfully cooperated for more than a decade, for several decades at this point. So, yeah. you know, so, like, yes, you can still be uh, a deep southern racist, but that is still a caricature. It's not the degree of prejudice that is implicated by your... You so, guys how would you suggest right. that I make someone do something out of their will? You never do. Like, as a player character, you never make a player character do something else. You can influence them and entice them like any other game with the words you say or with the actions you take. You so, never I, can never in, I can never intimidate someone to do something. I can never, at the, at the risk of their own them. life... You can try and intimidate them, but the situation, the context, has to actually be intimidating to the player character. Now, three against one is not intimidating, no matter what you look like. Yeah. If you had done it to Philip because he's a pussy corporate who only wants to get away with things, his Survive, man. he would have caved. That's mm. the difference. You can't ever, ever, ever in my games...
force another player character to do something. Oh, well, just I mean, I, I honestly would think that it would yes, be... Yes, I have to head out, sorry. That's okay. fine, Caleb. We're just, we're just yeah. talking about post-game yeah. anyway. Yeah. It's I, I I really I, don't like that, I, considering Mike, that I, the only way that I can get someone to do something is by enticing them, yet I cannot entice... Like, I just physically cannot do no, that. Like, you can't. No, I can't, because my negatives are so high. But we're talking that, like, in the same way that I'm saying... There's no mechanical way for you to force people. There's no mechanical thing forcing you to suck at talking with them. Yeah, there is. I like, have a negative playing. two to conversation. Like that's pretty doesn't much. Doesn't fucking it. matter because conversation only well, no, no. applies to NPCs. Yeah, exactly. Conversation only applies to NPCs. Your You're conversation with with, with Graham is totally real. You're, he's a real person, you're a real person, you're playing in character, your characters can talk, you should not be thinking about your negatives to culture or conversation. You can slightly be bad at it because it's sort of in character, but in no way does minus two to conversation affect your interactions with PCs in the same way that in no way does an intimidation score affect your interactions with PCs. Right. Well then, I've been building this character entirely wrong. So, there you go. I mean, That sucks for me. I guess. I mean, it affects it. And uh, Dave, I want you to be. I don't want you to be upset well, about this. Like, well, I want you to to get. Well, on this it, it just kind of changes the way that I was planning to interact with the party. Like, in my opinion, he was going to be a necessity, but not something anyone wanted to have around. And my interactions with the party would have been something like, I would make. I would try and make them do things under threat of me doing other things. If that makes well, sense. Well, you are the most important. Well. In the next session, you're going to be one of the most important people because you're the only doctor. Yeah, that's true. But like, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to be that guy that withholds healing because I don't. You know what Isn't I mean? Like, that what I, character would do. Yeah, probably not because he's a fucking. He's a medical professional at some stage, and you know, he, it's not like he he outright hates people, but at the same time, he doesn't have a way of making people do things other than threatening them, because his conversation skill says. Negative three, that means, yo, the only way that I can actually interact with people is by being blunt and forward, or but by yeah, being so, what, incredibly forward, abrasive to them. Blunt and forward is a real and effective thing in many situations. Aside like, from when I'm dealing with anyone who you're is not an allowed. NPC. So essentially with a minus Sorry. three to conversation, the way that I see it is you have essentially no charisma, right? Yeah. Um, and what that means is there's no bluffing involved. There's no sly winks or smirks. You're Spock from Star Trek, but Spock got people to do things all the goddamn time. You're just angry Spock. You're not emotionless Spock. You're just angry Spock. I wouldn't say angry. I'm just more like... Abrasive Spock. Yeah. Like... You're short-tempered short Spock. Uh, impatient Spock. Mm. The point is, Spock gets people to do things all the time because he has a high intellect, so he can explain why something is the smart choice um, and people will yes, listen to him because he's the smartest person in the room. But his, he didn't, he wouldn't have problems communicating with people. My character literally does. No, he, no, you wouldn't, because you're looking at conversation wrong. Conversation is just a very smart. shitty name for charisma. Like that's what it is. It's not you have a total ineptitude of communication. Like you're not socially retarded. Oh, yeah. You don't have autism. I mean, you have. He could. You imagine, just imagine, don't imagine have somebody charisma. Who's Imagine somebody who's explaining something that's way too high above their the person they're talking to's level. They don't have to have charisma to talk to that person. The person just doesn't understand what they're talking about, and they kind of go along with things. That's what, I mean, what Spock would do is conversation. He would, he would, he would logically to not the capacity to speak. Uh, your knowledge and ability to verbally communicate. Right, but what it's implying is that it's the capacity to. Uh, it, it, it's it's conversation as opposed to talking. Use so so how yeah. would I make how would I make having said all that? How would you recommend that I would make a player character, not just an NPC? Because I I took leadership just to do this, by the way. Um, how would I make a player character feel fearful of who I am and what I can do? Context. It, it, it the the thing was I didn't if if my character felt th I if I felt like my character should feel threatened by you. I, I would have played it like that, but I feel like three against one. And well, I get that, but like at the same actually, time, I, like, I, I, I didn't feel threatening. When it's a player character, your stats never matter. 
That's just how that's how most games work. The games where you do actually have like say Vampire the Masquerade where there's a spell called Dominate and you can actually take over people's minds and force them to do things. Every game I've ever seen that actually allows Dominate to be used on player characters ends because nobody wants to play anymore. Like mechanically forcing players to do something from another player's perspective is game ending. It kills the entire thing. Well, I get that, but there's a difference between like just you know, GTFOing and like actually doing the job that he was hired on to do is a little different in context. Yeah, I wouldn't force him to like, you know, just clean my shoes or some shit. What I'm saying is I wanted the party to stick around so that we could clear this, uh, you know, thing, the, the crashing, whatever you call it, blast chamber. Uh -huh. And... The part and one player in the party decided that he wasn't going to agree with me, which is fine. But at the same ah. time, I had no way of being able to uh, convince them to. Sure, stay. you did. You could have said the the blast chamber has all the supplies we'll need to yeah, survive. But he knew this it. more than I did, and I was playing the route 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 of. I need you to do your job because I'm going to continue to do my job and even further than that. But he doesn't so have the conversation on, skill to he, do this. So the no, only way no, no, that no, no, he, no, 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 because the conversation skill does not apply to interactions. With so PC. basically, you, what you're saying is, I can talk to the party like how I'd talk to anyone else in real life, but when I talk to an NPC, I am mentally handicapped. No, when you talk to an NPC and actually want to try and get something out of the conversation, there's a goal to the conversation with an NPC. You have to roll the skill check. Well, there was a goal with my conversation as well. There's always a goal to the conversation, but I'm saying, like, if you walk up to an NPC and you want to try and get a piece of information out of them, then you roll a conversation skill, a piece of information they're withholding. In fact, you know, 50% of the time, you will still talk to an NPC without using your conversation skill at all. Because it only applies when you need to do the skill check, which is only under certain situations with NPCs. It's a charisma stat is essentially what it is. So even most of the time, you're talking to a normal NPC, you can just say what you think your character would say. You should never think, my character has a minus 3D conversation, therefore he can't even try to talk to this person. You just have to say, why does he have a minus 3D conversation? Well, it's because he doesn't give a shit. He's very blunt. So I will be very blunt in the conversation, but that doesn't mean I can't talk to them. It doesn't mean you can't be logical if you're blunt. Spock has a low conversation stat, but he still talks to people. Man, fuck Scott. It, it, it was not only that. It, it was the. It was also that in that same situation, I felt like it wasn't going to get us anywhere because we were going to die anyway because of what was happening to the ship. Uh, yeah, Graham's yeah. character had I feel, a... I feel like I needed, I needed to save who I could, and that was these four guys in this hallway, and that was all I thought. Because I looked in the engine room, I saw monsters. I, I, you know, I, you know, I, and I knew we should have, what we should have done is actually played out the conversation instead of going... Uh, and Dave, you know, he, was, he wasn't on the same page. That's fine. That's our bad. He thought that mechanics should apply, and he tried to go straight to the mechanics which he should have done. Um, but having found out that the mechanics didn't work, we should have better communicated well. The conversation then should continue because there was more than enough back and forth. There's good reasons to abandon, and there's good reasons to try and retake the uh, blast chamber. So it, 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 it obviously should have just been a conversation back and forth, and then eventually you know, you're not going to make up your mind or you agree or whatever. But we did. We ended up moving on from it and accomplishing it anyway. Um, and then it well, I I mean, ultimately, I didn't. It it what I got out of it was not like the result of the end of this thing could have been differently had it been able to work out in the way that I wanted it to work out versus the way that Graham's character wanted it to work out. So what I'm I, I just feel really really frustrated in the fact that. I, I want to stick to what my character is, even in PC conversations, but I can't because it doesn't like it. None of that shit matters. Whatsoever. You can't. No, it's no. It's uh, I, you're still it on the wrong page. Matter, right? It should yeah, influence yeah. how your character talks. It doesn't prevent your character from talking. So your character prevent, is uh, utterly capable of making the logical argument that the supplies are in the blast chamber, and that's important. Like he says it though, like you know the supply. You know he doesn't. He doesn't try and be like, hey. We should do the supplies right. Like he doesn't try and convince them because he's not good at that. Um, he doesn't have this sort of 
He doesn't have this sort of so business. So if I, if I don't have pitch. convince, I have logic. to lie on like intimidate then, right? Because that's the no, opposite of no. convince. What? So in, in two, there's two ways to get people to do things. You can convince them to do things, or you can force them to do things. And the and then the I mean, third one would be, right. I guess, you can say, well, here's what is the options, and then. You know, Graham's character already stated that he had no intention of doing anything other than going to the pods. Okay. So, I was... So in any other game, yeah. why do you think if he has no intention and he doesn't agree with your argument, you should be able to affect that? Because I'm a the, big, I, scary monster. <laughs> Honestly. Right, but you're... Yeah, in, but what? You don't who has had years and years of history decimating his people. Right, but there's one of you and three people with him. So why should he be scared of you? Because I, I also are... took a particular skill so that I could intimidate people. Uh, that's I mean, that's right, that's where this sort of gets messy. Skills for me don't because... overcome context. Like well, the, you would you say that people... I was playing wrong in that context? Um, I would say that I don't know. I don't understand your expectation. No matter how scary you are, if they outnumber you and have guns, there's no reason to be intimidated by you and afraid. Uh, I get, I get. Not only that, but it, if if I mechanically was forced to agree with you just because of the rules, I would me Graham would be would feel cheated, and then I would half-assedly do it, and then it wouldn't really doesn't. Well, really yeah, matter. I mean, I'm like you not. wouldn't want to do it, so you would do it half-assed anyway, right? I mean, yeah, as I a guess, player, but, but I also, as a but I, as a player, I wouldn't be having fun. I wouldn't want to play the game anyway, well, and that's why on I, the same side of things, about. I feel the exact same way, not being able to. Not like being able to force the player. See, that's just not how any role playing game works, Dave. <sighs> well, I mean, like, I've played, I, I mean, even in your game, Graham, I've intimidated party members before. Because so, the context yeah, is in your uh, favor. You actually I, had I feel, I feel like, context. I, I, I feel like that's, that was different. I mean, give me a scenario and I'll explain Well, what when, I like, for example, in the um, Wrath of the Minotaur game, when I stopped, um, I forget his name now, the new character, from going into the cave. Oh uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. I know the content. I know the contents you're talking about. Yeah. It was mostly just because. Um, I mean, part that of makes sense it, because. Yeah, that part, makes sense because Engelard is that kind of character. So I mean, just, yeah, in, in that, my, in that my, case, my, my, ga my, my game is not mechanical at all. My game is not a mechanical game. It's a story-driven yeah, game. I get so that. I like and that this this sense. game is mechanical though, so that's why I took these these traits and, in order to do but, these things. So. But anyway, we, it doesn't like matter I, because I, I, ultimately the GM made a decision on how things work. So. But it does matter because we want you on the same page. No, I get that. And I'll, I'll have to like... I don't feel like you're... You're not... And the other thing is, Dave, you're not wrong. You're yeah. on a different page. And we're struggling to get you on the same page. That's fine. I'll just, I'll just go with whatever you guys have decided because it, it literally is still three against one. <laughs> Either way I look at it. So. <laughs> well, um, well, I've... I, f I feel like you're not uh, you're not I, th I feel like you need to give it some more thought because I feel like if I was in your shoes um, based on the so character, how would you would, play the monster play that has uh, okay up to this point we've had no interactions with any NPCs right absolutely yeah. none so I've had no way of knowing how the conversation skill works so the right. only time that I actually had any remote conversation was with the party uh -huh. so how would I have known otherwise that, that's kind of what I'm trying to get at here. Like, I came into this game thinking that, okay, it's mechanical, so it's I sort of a given, my... in my opinion. Yeah. Like, you never, then that's my problem for not communicating to you. Or, indeed, like, we had no idea we were even on different pages. Yeah. It's, it's, it's See, a uh, given. Every game that I've played so far, even in Graham's game, even in like other DD games, I've managed to roll an intimidate check and have an intimidate check rolled against me. Like, for example, I wanted to. Like, in another game, I wanted to, you know, murder, and Jacob, you weren't there for this, but I wanted to murder a NPC, and one of the party members didn't want that to happen, so we did an intimidate check versus my intimidate check, and his intimidation worked over mine, because he, got, he rolled higher, so I had to, you know, not do what I was planning to do, which he didn't want me to do. And that's well, how I thought it, it would work in this it, game as well. So, well, in, in in that in that situation, I probably wouldn't allow that either if, if it was up to me. Okay, but so the leadership skill basically allows me to force people to do things against their will because of my leadership. Be that through me being charismatic, or be that be 
be that be, with me being like intimidating. And I was going to So here's get what we're going to do trip. going forward. Uh -huh. Um because it uh I'm so okay. In the situation that happened. Sure. Uh, you're and however tall, big Nephilim with a gun, and you're pointing at Graham. Um, now it's equally, it 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 makes sense for him not to be afraid because he has strength in numbers. Um, but there is reason for him to be uh, afraid. Like he can be afraid, but he can ignore the fear because he's um, he's got strength in numbers. So what we'll do going out is we will roll your intimidate, um, and then I will use that to tell him or whoever how intimidated they are but doesn't force them to act. In sure, I'll be way. happy with that. I mean, it's more like... So I can say in the next time, and if we would have done it again, you would have rolled intimidation, and I would have said to Graham, he's just pulled a gun on you, he's a nine-foot monster, and you are suddenly very taken aback. You have flashbacks of your genetic memory of encountering Nephilims. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll leave it there, and Graham, as a player, can still do whatever he wants, but he now has... I've told him expressly as the GM that in character he has a reason to be afraid, and if he gives me the compelling reason that, well, there's three of us, and we all have guns, so I'm able to push through my fear and stand up to him, that's fine. But at the same time, it gives him the pause to consider that perhaps he should still be intimidated. And, I, and look, I'd be happy with that. Um, it's just the same as any other game. Like, he can feel, he, he feels intimidated, but the way he acts is different. Basically, what happened in this game was, no, I'm not going to, I'm going to ignore that, and then I'm going to push this guy into a pod and get the fuck well, out. Well, that's because like, I trust Graham to I, I, already I, consider that he's intimidated. I, I, I didn't feel like my character would be intimidated in that situation because the odds, I mean, because my, my argument, I felt, was more logical than yours. And I felt like the, the odds were my favor. Well, I would have let you push uh, I, I feel, through the intimidation. I feel like I wouldn't. But I, I agree with Dave that there's no chance you were totally unaffected by an eight-foot no, monster but, that's a but, Nephilim. It, uh, anyway, that, it doesn't it doesn't matter ultimately in the end because I, we're just the rules the process literally do way. say that I can't use it against PCs anyway. And yeah. I didn't care to like look into that distinction too much. So yeah. if anything... I'm at fault for not fucking building my character correctly, but at the same time, it's like, you know, I, yeah, I just feel let down about that, to be honest. That's how I feel. Um, yeah. Because well, my character is supposed to be a big fucking scary monster, right? So that's why I, I specifically designed him to be as uh, less likable as possible. He's taken serious penalties to be scary, Graham. So yeah. even though the final decision is still yours, I'm going to allow the mechanics to remind you how scary he is. But look, I, don't, I, don't want, I don't want anyone to change their gaming just because of the way that... No, we're, we're not you're going gonna, to. You're going you're gonna to have to trust me that I know what I'm doing. No, here's yeah. no. I, I, I'm not going to have to do that because I'm the GM and I've made a ruling. Um, <laughs> although it still does implicitly trust both of you. Okay. So what I'm saying is... Um, He's taken so many penalties to be scary that in order to get, like, that is going to come through. It's not, never going to force anybody to do anything, but it's hard to communicate, oh, you're dealing with a scary person. Um, it's hard to implicitly and emotionally feel that. So I'm going to make it emotional by giving it the gravitas it deserves when it happens and comes up. I'm going to make him roll. The roll doesn't force you to do anything, but if it's like a 24, uh... Like, then I can say, he rolled a 24, and you f rem remember all the worst memories of the Nephilim from your past, and blah, 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 or whatever it is. And then you can still do whatever you want, but it'll set the stage with an appropriate amount of gravitas for his character, which is, the, at the very least, fair to him. Um, well, I mean, Gr Krogan puts, it in, tension. Krogan puts it in, in like, pretty, pretty good words in the chat. He says, fear isn't logical. And that, that's yeah, pretty but much his, like, his argument's you know, dumb, actually. I've been reading his argument. Oh, no I, haven't, I haven't read that Woola text, to be honest. His full argument is that because uh, fear is totally emotional, that the logic of being one versus three doesn't happen. Which no, isn't that the totally case. does. In, in that case, I, I honestly think that... Um, like, how far can you make an argument of, like, my character wouldn't care that he's surrounded? Like, 
that I mean, like you can make that argument all day, I guess. Um, well, then, then the I, then the I, I, I told I told you that I would shoot you. If, if you and I would have shot you back, like honestly. That, like, I, I know, and I'm, I'm saying that's that's. Like it, so I mean, playing that, that's totally what, in that, character. That's what, that's what would have happened. It should have come to blows. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's like just because my my char my my character is like security guy. I mean, he has kind of a he was just I guess he was I was thinking more of uh, you know my. My personality was uh, my personality was originally intended to be mean, but yeah. I guess that's kind of what you do. So I want everyone to go home in the next two weeks, <laughs> and um, your homework. Uh -huh. um, there's going to be a lot of homework, but the first stage of homework is to go back and rethink your your character because I want characters that are cohesive and consistent, but you cannot make a character that is going to tacitly make it impossible for you to play with other players. So you can be abrasive, but you can't be um, so abrasive that you're definitely going to come to shooting each other in situations. Well, you have I, to at least be uh, right. Well, I'm, I imagine if he like saves my life or something, I'll, I'm, I mean, I imagine up that some, if something like that's what you're thinking about. I just don't want the big. Uh, I, I, I would get through it. I would get through it in a survival situation, yeah. but I felt like he was actively preventing me from saving uh, Caswell. I, I don't want to talk about the situation yeah. in context anymore. Okay, I'm I just, just saying. Yeah. The, the one thing I want to leave on, though, um, is he's already become a joke, almost, considering he couldn't fit in the safety pods. <laughs> and um, There's going to be some comedy about your size, but at the same time, it's also going to come into your favor in many situations as uh, well. Well, I mean, yeah, I don't... I honestly think that... Uh, yeah, anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what I think, because the rules say otherwise, so... Anyway, um... I guess we're going to leave it there. Um, uh, yeah, that's been Die Party Frag Empire. As you can see, there has been a little bit of contention in the way that uh, it, sh it it resolved, I guess, for the most part. But in terms of like combat and whatnot, I think we pretty much hit the nail on the head. I think we've worked out what works and what doesn't work. And uh, honestly, yeah. um, there's some stuff about like maybe... Like, the, f the focus thing seems like a really dumb trait to go into. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, uh, I did not... I, I, I've, I'm not like an expert at the rules, matter. but it seems utterly worthless. Like, the recovery point. thing is pretty neat. I'm not gonna lie. Like, having extra focus to get the extra recovery is pretty cool. Um, but yeah. if that's the only thing you're going into, I mean, your points are better... And it's just one-to-one, one, right? Yeah, it's, it's so... For example, I have two, but my race also gets a plus one to focus, so... Um, what I would say is maybe make the focus recovery um, a little more scaly. So yeah. like one is one, but two is three, and three is five or something. Though to be fair, if you if That'd you just much. do but if you just do prep every turn and take one action, you will never run out of endurance if you have a high fo uh, focus. Like, there's yeah. just no way that, that would ever happen to you. Well, but you having... can get hit by multiple things or get attacked more than once. Yeah, well, but having right, said that, if five yeah. focus, then things start to change. Yeah, um, so like, so maybe I, maybe I'm being a little hard on focus, actually. Yeah, but in maybe terms of like combat, I don't see it being very useful, considering that if we're going off battle maps, I have never seen a battle map that takes place over like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of meters, uh, which is what focus would need to have in order to be better, because yeah, that, focus yeah. and rifles and sniping, like that sort. Of, so. Uh, yeah, and because focus only applies in combat, it's a combat attribute. Like, I would like to be able to say, you're a sniper, right? Um, and you're yeah. sniping this guy, but there's no reason to drop into combat for that because he can't respond. Like, he can hide and stuff, but I can't have your focus come into play because, honestly, the way that the system is currently set up, sniping makes the most sense as an out-of-combat action. Yeah, like as in an initial combat starter. And well, and then maybe not even starting combat if they have no way of closing the gap you're sniping from. Mm. Like I, I, like maybe I would go into combat only to, to determine how many, like the turn order, so that they duck and hide and stuff. Sure. But there's no return fire in any way, shape, or form because you're sniping. I don't know. It's honestly, when Wade sees the video, I hope that he comes to us and and has a perfect explanation for rifles or has a really good idea for what our problem with rifles is. Um, yeah, also, I, I think people want to be snipers in yeah. games. 
Honestly, they I want think, to make the crack shot. I think, Jacob, it was just a situational problem for your character more I mean, than a rifle problem for your character. I I mean, that's part of the issue, but I also that um You would rifles, have hit the, the, the skilled henchman. Yeah. But, yeah. but having said that, like, even if you even did if, manage to shoot really effectively at a distance, if you just didn't have the hit die roll and it, like, bounced off some guy's armor, it would still be as useless as something else. So like, even if you if you even if you remove the the distance damage, right on your range, yeah, you would still be at a disadvantage if you didn't roll high, which is where perception comes in. So maybe rifles, as well as having the crit of five, yeah. circumvent some armor, since you're making a crack shot anyway. True. True. Yeah. I mean. So then, so then it's easier for you to crit with a rifle, right? And the crit is more meaningful when you crit with a what rifle. Right. And both of those fire. things would make a rifle worthwhile. Yeah, because currently right now, the cr I honestly think the downsides aren't worth the upsides compared to something that can fire more. Well, that's probably why you need a secondary gun. Yeah. I mean, like, if you had a SMG, for example, you what, you're running three, three perception? Uh, I, yeah, three perception. I'm running three perception, and I didn't miss once. So yeah. um, that's probably what the issue was, it's just the rate of fire or dealing with it. I mean, like, you know, that's, yeah, that's pretty much the only answer I have for that, really. I mean, the, the right yeah. gun for the right situation, right? So, um, I mean, I in that case, I would agree part of it was the right gun. Wrong well, I think wrong even, system. well, I'm, yeah. I'm concerned that maybe many situations are not the right situation for a rifle. Yeah, but that's, that's what I've been saying. It. We've talked about this to death. Um, I think we've covered literally everything that we could possibly cover. Yeah. Um, we will talk much more in the preceding two weeks, um, and uh, etc. I think we will. I think we will make plenty of progress in the next two weeks. Uh, two weeks from now, we start survival. We no longer do just combat. There's going to be all sorts of things happening. There's going to be NPCs. There's going to be spare time. Finally, roles. I can there's intimidate gonna be, people. <laughs> there, there's going to be all sorts of stuff. So really, um, let's work on on. Like this entire that we we accomplished the purpose of what this first session was for. We explored combat. We resolved combat. We figured out battle map combat uh, a lot, right. and we've questioned some of the balance choices. But that's that's what did, just what us. did you think of the move oh. thing, by the way? I think it I think it means that almost all battle maps are going to be really small, and therefore, what's the point of um, sniping? Like it just comes back to that. Like yeah. moving is very. Uh, mm. It's very, it's very small, so I'm going to have to make maps small. I'm going to have to make cover not very far away from each other, but occasionally far away from each other so that there's times that you're exposed. Well, you can also, yeah. like, I mean, there is stuff in here where you can take cover and stuff like that. So, I mean, like, yeah, it's not so bad. Yeah. Um, um, anyway. Anyway. Yeah, I think we'll it. leave I think it there. Um, thanks, everyone, thing, for watching. Only... If you haven't... Uh, what was that saying? I was just saying, the only other thing I would be like is that hordes... Def it definitely was really. A it definitely seemed a little bit odd how the hordes. I honestly think wreckage probably did them wrong. We Wait, might be wrong. The, the, the hordes. hordes. We there's something. It's just something we'll look into later. I was just. just I think that in that situation you had far too many people. I think what a horde is supposed to be is four individual people that have the same stats as one another. Yeah. Rather yeah, that's than them supposed, being. That's what I did. Well, no, you made four stacks of you made three stacks of four rather than it being right. two stacks so you were of were fighting four, against four but each person is like its own individual icon on the map right um but uh in this just, case they're so small there, there'd be no reason for them to take up each yeah. individual space yeah I was just typically uh, if it was soldiers you're right i would put them in four different spaces okay. yeah sure and i was well aware that in the situation with the personal fighting like it says a horde or henchman is equal to one player so I was well aware that it was a three versus two scenario. Okay, all right. That was intentional. Yeah. Um, so I didn't mess up the horde stats at all, uh, unless Wade tells me, yes, even those tiny drones should occupy different spaces, all which right. he can go ahead and tell me, and that's fine, but yeah. it, didn't make, it didn't make fluff and flavor sense to me yeah. that they would have different spaces. I was just going to say it might be worth looking into it just to make sure that they're not randomly a lot more difficult but I'm the, it was just a minor comment. It probably just yep. more complaining about how I never. I mean, they're game supposed play. to have 16 defense. I don't know if I agree with that. I think yeah. just by virtue of having 16 four people is in a pretty group. rough. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I get it because, like, they have no defense if you break the defense. If you make the shot, they die every single time. So I get that their defense is a little high, but, you know, I, I, I don't know. Maybe it'll get better as we get better weapons and stuff. Maybe that's all yeah. it is. Which I worry about in a survival variant very much. Well, any, well <laughs> maybe you won't be fighting all that many hordes and henchmen in the survival variant. Yeah, so maybe. Yeah, we'll just we'll treat it like we treat it. Yeah. Anyways, later, let's end the thing. It's always been six hour, or five and a half hours. So um, thanks, everyone, for watching. If you missed any of this, it'll be up on YouTube uh, over the coming weeks. Um, and pretty much, if you haven't, please give me a follow. I really appreciate it. It helps me out quite a bit. I know we had quite a few followers tonight, so thanks, everyone, for that. And uh, thanks, everyone, for playing Wreckage. Thanks for stripping your hair out to play to make this game for us happen. Sorry I got so it's fucking bad, salty, but, you know, that's just who I am. I got invested in making this character fucking baller as fuck, but in the end, he, he couldn't do that, so that's fine. I'll just have to rework him so that he's not so... Uh, I guess aggressive would be the right word. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks everyone for watching. Um, we out. Later. Thank you all. Bye-bye. See you.